morning, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman, and today we're going to review our second lesson in 30 Days to Understanding the Bible. I hope you guys can hear me. I'm actually wearing my Bluetooth today, so I'm hoping that you get a better sound quality um, with these. You can let me know what you think. Um, I got home yesterday. Woo, was it wild? We drove home. It took us about six and a half hours because we uh, got in some traffic once we come into town. Um, I had so much to do when I got home. The refrigerator was full of leftovers. Normally, when we go to Florida, I clean out the refrigerator. I clean the house. I make sure all the clothes are washed. Well, this time when we went, and we've been gone for a while, I didn't do any of that. So when I got home, I needed groceries. I started cleaning out the refrigerators. But on the way home, I ordered through Instacart from Publix and from Aldi our groceries. So they were delivered between 6 and 7. And then I made a salad. And Mama called me. And she's, of course, ready to see me. So I'm going to see her today. Um, but I just thought I'd give you a synopsis. Chris um, went out walking one day. I don't know if y'all seen it on his channel or not, but he posted it when he went through one of the parks down there. And he had quite a few ticks on him when he came in the house. And several of them were attacked, and I took them off. But they started getting red-looking and puffy, and they've actually got like this little black-looking spot in the middle well now the the it's just getting bigger and bigger around it now it's not one of those rings you know like for Lyme disease but it is red and it's starting to get all patchy and stuff it's really strange looking so we have to get him to the doctor first thing this morning as well because of that um so as soon as we have our bible study i'm going to try to get him an appointment and get him i'd like for him to go to the dermatologist because I'm afraid if I pulled the ticks off and their head stayed in, um, I don't know if that matters or not. And the dermatologist I know could probably take that out if they needed to. Anyway, when I got home, I had 30 cookbooks waiting on me. I had my brand new Bible that I ordered. I'm so excited about. Y'all, this Bible is amazing. You know, I told you that ChristianBooks.com had Bibles on sale. I got this sword Bible. Look how big it is. It is a real um, leather sewn binded. It has got gold, uh, what do you call it, embossing on it. It has got the chapters tagged, and it is large print. Look at this thing. I'm in love. I stayed up late. Reading the begin, you know, like the introduction to it. Um, oh, that's not even a regular page. This is how the regular text looks. It's really nice and big. I really love it. Oh, I'm in love. So anyway, can y'all tell me if y'all can hear me good? Because I'm talking through my Bluetooth. Um, today's lesson is going to be pretty short and sweet. I have marked all in my book. Um. I also had my book when I got home, and these things are wonderful for this study. So if you are having to write down everything today, um, and you don't have a book to go by, we're actually looking at a map today, okay? And this map, if you can try real quick in your notes, try to make some shapes like that on your paper, um, I don't know that this thing is turned around. I don't think it is. I guess it is, too. Those rivers backwards, ain't it? Anyway, um, we're going to study this. I'm going to tell you about the different places. If you have your book, or even if you've got a Kindle, try to trace the bodies of water uh, so that you'll know where the land is. What's strange about these maps that are strange to me is they've actually got the water dark and the land white okay so um i think it's kind of opposite most of the time 
But we'll read a little bit now, okay? It says, uh, first he tells us, in case y'all don't have the book, he tells us the size of our solar system is massive and it's beyond comprehension. And he says that uh, to get a perspective, you could imagine you're in the Bonneville Salt Flats with nothing but a tabletop flat around you for miles and miles. I don't even know where that is. I didn't look it up. But I'm imagining it's out in the desert somewhere or it's really, really flat. And he says you can see for miles and miles, but you can't see anything else. Okay. And then he says you could put down a beach ball and then two, uh, and then two, that's about two foot in diameter and represent the sun with the beach ball. And then he says for you to get a feel of how big the solar system is. You would walk about a city block and put down a mustard seed for the first planet. So you can see for miles and miles, you put down a beach ball, two foot in diameter. That's the sun. You walk about a block, put down a mustard seed, and that would be Mercury. You go another block for Venus and put down a BB. Mark off yet another block and put down a green pea to represent the Earth. And then he goes on and on to tell you how large our solar system is. Because another block from there, you put down a mustard seed that represents Mars. And then you sprinkle some grass around uh, for an asteroid belt, he says. He's trying to give you a perspective. Then the next time you have to walk, you have to go four blocks um, to get back to the sun, okay? So then he tells you, you know, how far you have to go to put the rest of the planets, and it kind of gives you an idea, and it's a long way, miles. It goes from blocks to miles, okay? So it kind of gives you a perspective of, of the solar system and how big it is, okay? So then he says that in order to understand the Bible, it's really important that you understand where things are. Um, let's see. He says, says um, understanding the size and location of things and the relationships and the distances between them gives, a, gives us a perspective. Um, just as this example gives a perspective about the solar system, the a knowledge of the geography can give us a perspective about the events of the Bible. It is helpful to know the names, the locations, the relative positions of important places. Otherwise, we just skim over the information without comprehension or vis visualization. And this makes the Bible less interesting and less easily understood, which I agree. Because most of the time, I don't know anything about the history. And when I'm reading the word, I pick up stuff, but then I just kind of skim over, you know, it just goes in one ear and out the other kind of thing. Because I'm like, well, where was Egypt in reference to Jerusalem or where was Egypt in reference to um, Assyria? And I had no, you know, you just kind of don't have any idea unless you're real good at history. So he teaches us uh, the bodies of water and their locations. He gives us a work map to write them down. He gives us uh, the locations of areas that are used in the Bible and then a work map for those, okay? Then he lets us know that this whole area in the Old Testament is about as large as the state of Texas. So everything is about, perspective-wise, is about that big within the map, okay? So it's not like the United States where you've got you know, California all the way over to the um, Washington, uh, it's not DC, yeah, you know, where the capital, where the president is, Washington, DC. Anyway, um, it's not like that, it's like a lot smaller area, okay? So, um, he talks about the bodies of water and he gives us a, a head, uh, some head information on them. He says that the Mediterranean Sea is the land of the Old Testament that lies. It's beautiful and blue. 
it is a body of water and it's big on our map okay so the mediterranean sea is really big on the map that's it right there and then he talks about the the nile river which is down here where egypt is um he talks about the sea of galilee the jordan uh, river and the dead sea he talks about the euphrates and the tigris rivers and he talks about um this is the Persian Gulf, okay? And he tells us a little bit about these bodies of water. He says that the Sea of Galilee is a freshwater lake. It's not really a sea. You know, we think the Sea of Galilee, this is some big piece of water, and it's really not. It's more like a lake, um, and it is freshwater like a lake, and it is seven miles wide and 14 miles long. It lies about 36 miles inland from the Mediterranean Sea. So there's only 36 miles in between that large Mediterranean Sea and the Sea of Galilee. And that's not very much, y'all. That's like me driving to uh, where I'm from in Cedartown. I live in Dallas. Um, I mean, it's not very far at all. And it says the Jordan River then flows out of the Sea of Galilee down um, and it says that it travels for 65 miles and it empties into the Dead Sea. Now, the Dead Sea is shaped like a giant hot dog with a bite taken out of it at the bottom. Okay. And it says that it's the lowest, it's, it's in, it lies at the bottom of the world. It is the lowest point on the land, almost 3,000 feet below sea level. And it says that the water flows into it from the Jordan, but no water flows out of it. So as a result, it has a, con a very high concentration of mineral deposits, and it doesn't support normal plant and animal life. And that's why it's called the Dead Sea. So that should, you know, ring a bell with you when we talk about the Dead Sea. You know that it's just this big, but this large area that looks like a hot dog shape, and it uh, is the lowest point in the world on the map, okay? 3,000 miles below sea level, and nothing is living in it. Okay, it says the Nile River is the most famous river in the world, and it flows through the heart of Egypt. It flows below the Mediterranean Sea, okay? It spreads out like many fingers and empties. It actually empties into the Mediterranean Sea. So you've got the Nile River that's shaped like fingers down below the Mediterranean Sea. This water's flowing into the Mediterranean Sea. You've got the Sea of Galilee. You've got the Jordan River. And then you've got the Dead Sea. And then over on the other side, you have the Tigris and Euphrates Rivers. The ones that's closest to the sea, of, the river that's closest to the Sea of Galilee, uh, they're kind of, if you think about them being in alphabetical order, you've got the Tigris and Euphrates. Well, E comes first. It's closest to the Sea of Galilee. So it's the one on the inside. And then you've got the Tigris on the outside. Okay. And it says um, they flow into the Persian Gulf, which is located below that. So that's all of the waters. And it says that the Persian Gulf um, separates... Uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia and it says that the Tigris and Euphrates flow through present-day Iraq, Iraq okay now he also shows you where he thinks or where people think the Garden of Eden might have been and it's actually where the Tigris and Euphrates meet there's a V at the bottom okay and that's where they think the Garden of Eden um, was because wherever the Garden of Eden was, there were four rivers. Now, I know the Tigris and Euphrates is only showing two, uh, but that's why I'm not real sure. And I mean, I'd have to ask Chris. To me, it looks more like if you look at the Mediterranean Sea, the... Um, the Nile River has four fingers at the top. So I'm not sure why they didn't place the Garden of Eden there since there's four fingers at the top and there are four rivers, but instead they put it 
at the cross of the Tigris and Euphrates. Now, they know more about the history, so I shouldn't say anything like that, but it's just confusing to me. Um, but he talks about that. Okay, then you've got, you've got the Garden of Eden. You've got, the, you've got Canaan, Israel, and Palestine, which are all the same place. So if you're reading the Bible, and it's talking about the land of Canaan, or it's talking about Israel, or it's talking about Palestine, Palestine, I guess is how you should say it. Um, they're all the same place. They were just named different names throughout the periods of history. So uh, it's the same area. So that helps you kind of understand where that is, okay? Then you've got Jerusalem, and of course we know that Jerusalem was the capital um, of Israel, and it's also where... Uh, it says it's central to the story of the Old Testament, okay? It is just northwest of the Dead Sea. So it's right next to the Dead Sea. Um, you've got Egypt. You've got Assyria and Babylonia and Persia. And he tells you where to place them on the map. Egypt is over there where the Nile River is below the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, you've got... Assyria, which is up at the top, where the two, the where the um, Euphrates and the Tigris flow. Here's the Garden of Eden. Well, Assyria's up here in the top. Then you've got Babylonia, and then you've got um, Persia. And he talks about how these were superpowers in the Old Testament. These areas were superpowers, and they would conquer each other. Okay, and he tells you about that. Um, then he takes you to the next page, and he shows you where these areas are in the present day. He, he locates Iran, Iraq, Syria, Jordan, Israel, Lebanon, Turkey, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia. And they're all in the same area. Then he shows you, uh, a, shows you how big Texas is and how it covers this whole area area of the history of the Old Testament to kind of give you an idea of how big of a body of land this is talking about when we talk about people in the Old Testament and stories, okay? And of course, at the end, it gives you a review and you get to write in where everything is. And boy, does it teach you. It is amazing how much you learn going through the study. And of course, at the end, it gives us a self-test. So, it just says your knowledge of the geography of the Old Testament will enable you to understand and envision the history that unfolds from it. You have just mastered an important section. Now, those of y'all who do not have this book, um, you can get it on a um, ebook for $9.99. You can order this book all day long from different places on the internet. Anywhere from $2 all the way up to probably $15. Um, you can get a used book. Um, you might have to wait on it a few days to get here, but that doesn't matter. You can catch up because it's so nice to have. Just like yesterday when I started the study, I didn't have the book. And so I couldn't write my answers down. But now if you don't want to put money in a book, you'll never, ever be, you'll never regret buying this book. Let me just say that. You will never. I had this book, and I had several of them, and I wound up giving them to people because I loved it so much. You will never regret buying this book, and you can always go back and redo the little self-tests and learn it all over again because once we get in here, you are going to be amazed at what we learn about the Bible, okay? And you can use the ebook just as good if you want to put it in your little Kindle library or whatever. Then just use a pencil and a piece of paper and take notes. Um, what is the name of the book again, Linda? It is called 30 Days to Understanding the Bible. And the author is Max, M-A-X, and his last name is Andrews, A-N. No, I'm sorry, not Andrews, Anders, A-N-D-E-R-S. This book has been around for a long time, and it has had different covers. The original book that I bought at the dollar store, well, it was a dollar general, so it wasn't a dollar, but it, I bought it at the dollar general. 
was actually white with a green stripe at the top and a green stripe at the bottom. So um, if you get that one, it, they say the same exact thing in them. And they're actually about to come out with another print with another cover. So this book has been out long enough that it's going to be have three different covers. But y'all, it is good stuff and you will enjoy it. Um, it is so good. It, and what I really love about it, I'm going to show you some of the pages. Okay, so like this is going to be the geography, let's say the arc of the Bible history. Okay, this is in a different chapter, but I'm just going to show you why the book is so nice. This shows you the arc. It has symbols for the different things that we're going to talk about. It's got a graph in here, and on this page, it's got where we would write information on the sheet. So it's like a lot of worksheets for us to learn. And when you when you um, apply yourself with a pencil and a piece of paper and you do these type of worksheets, it makes all the difference in the world on how much you can understand something. This is not a typical Bible study. This is not a typical, you know, women's Bible study book. It is strictly... Um, understanding the Bible, how it's put together, you know, what things mean in the Bible. It is it is good. So anyway, I can't stress enough how wonderful it is to have um, the book. Like this is our page in the back of the book that we talked about today. In the back of the book, it also summarizes everything you learn. And that's everything we learned today. We learned where... Um, the, the rivers are, the bodies of water are in the Old Testament. We learned where the names of the places are in the Old Testament. So now when I'm reading, if I know that someone traveled from Jerusalem to Egypt, I have a picture of it. I have a picture in my mind because I know Jerusalem is to the left of the Sea of Galilee or the Dead Sea. And I know where the Dead Sea is, and I know that Egypt is where the Four Finger Rivers goes into the Mediterranean. And I know that there's only six, 36 miles at the top where the Mediterranean is from uh, the Sea of Galilee. So I kind of have a picture in my mind of how many miles it took them to get to Egypt. Now, before I picked this book up, I had no idea. I didn't know if Egypt, I, I'm just being honest, I didn't know if Egypt was on the right. On the left, on the north, on the south, how many miles they had to go. But now that you know that the state of Texas is as big as the whole area traveled in the Old Testament, you get an idea of when these journeys, when they took these journeys, they didn't have to travel so far. Now, once Paul is in the New Testament, he travels a lot further because he goes over to Rome and places like that. Um, and I'm sure... We'll talk about that later in the book, but um, if you want to know what we're going to learn, I'm going to flip through here right quick and tell you it's been 24 minutes since we started. We're going to have an overview of Old Testament history, uh, a location of the Old Testament. We're going to talk about the art of the Bible histories. Um, we're going to talk about, and that talks about different people and the different people who wrote the books, and it talks about each of them, like Moses. Uh, it talks about bodies of water in the Gospels. It talks about the geography of Acts. It talks about the overview of New Testament history. Let's see what else. It talks about the timeline in the New Testament, the map of Palestine, Palestine, um, the, the map of a New Testament world, the 10 doctrines of the Bible. It will hit on those. You can see that on this page. Um, it's going to talk about the four major subdivisions of the doctrine in the Bible, um, which are going to be revelation, inspiration, illumination, interpretation. The four major subdivisions are existence, Attributes, sovereignty, the Trinity. Uh, 
the four major subdivisions of the doctrine of Christ is the deity, the humanity, the resurrection and the return, the subdivisions of the Holy Spirit, personality, the deity, the salvation and gifts. I mean, it's going to teach us a lot. I remember um, when I first started going back to church, once I was not a teenager anymore, I remember learning about the Trinity. And the Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and they're all as one. And I remember, that's something that I don't think I'll ever forget, but um, I remember asking my mother, and she is a daughter of a pastor, y'all, went to church her whole life. And I said, Mama, do you know what the Trinity is? And this is before she didn't have a mind, you know. And she really couldn't tell me what the Trinity was. So um, just because you go to church every Sunday and you and you listen to the preacher doesn't mean that you're learned or you've studied and that you know a lot about the Bible. Um, there was very, my mother knew very little about the Bible except a few stories. I mean, she knew what salvation was and she knew who God is and she knows who Jesus is. And a lot of people stop there. They're comfortable with that and they never go any further. But it's such a blessing to get in the Word. And with my new Bible, I was reading in the front of it, you know, and it in the in the authors of this Bible, this is the King James Version. They they tell you um, in the in the beginning of it um, which Bibles existed when, you know, which versions existed at what at what times in the world. Um, they talk about the Bible. They talk about um, of course, they tell us about Christ and that kind of stuff in the introduction. And then uh, they talk about the King James Version. They talk about uh, how it came about, uh, how the different translations existed uh, after the death of Christ. And um, then they start talking about the Hebrew names of God in, in here. And it's just so... Uh, it's such a blessing. I sat here last night and I read the introduction and Chris is sick. We're about to take him to the doctor. Um, but once I got finished with the introduction, it gives a basic outline of Old Testament history. And then it goes into single names of God and I wanted to read it, but it was already so late. I decided I read that this morning when I got up, but oh, I'm in love with my new Bible. I just love it. It is so big. And it's, and it's, the text is so large. And I'm going to show you. Now, I got it cheap. Y'all know me in deals. But you can see that they put somebody's name on it. And it was the wrong name. So all they do is black that out. I got this at ChristianBooks.com. This is the first Bible I have ever had that is real leather. Genuine leather. How it smells like leather. It is just wonderful. I just love it. I know I'm going to cherish this Bible. I probably will carry this Bible. I'm serious. This is a nice enough Bible that I'll probably be able to have this Bible my whole life. Okay. And I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. I think it's so pretty. So if y'all um, do yourself a favor for Christmas or whatever and buy you something that's this thing feels like heaven, just holding it. I don't know why, I just love it. Um, now, my other Bible, I was, I, you know, I've got my women's study Bible. And then I've got this King James study Bible. It is a hardback. I got the hardback because it's a lot cheaper to buy hardbacks with Bibles. You know, that's the only book that is cheaper to buy hardbacks of. Uh, all the other books that they sell, it's the hardbacks are more expensive. But with the Bible... It's cheaper because people want to hold a Bible and they want it to drape, you know, and so it's more comfortable reading. But um, I'll still use this one because this this study Bible has a lot of commentary and stuff at the bottom when when this one that I bought does it. Um, it does have a commentary and stuff in the back. But anyway, enough of that. I'll show you the, the box it came in. I know that's backwards. I'm sorry, but. It's the KJV uh, Sword Study Bible, and um, I'm just excited about it. Well, I guess I'll let y'all go. I've got to call my Chris an appointment. He got tick bit really bad. They are looking pretty gruesome. I mean, I'll probably, I might post the pic. I don't know if I, I could post it on Real Southern Woman because it's not a food site. 
I may post some pictures and let y'all see it. I've never seen a tick bite look the way his are looking. Um, so it, um, it's just kind of scary. I hope he doesn't get Lyme disease. The last thing I need, well, all of my, um, I have all of these, what do you call them? Y'all know what I'm talking about. These diseases that mess with your immune system that you have to go to the rheumatologist for. Anyway, I've got too much of that crap all in my family. And I'm, you know, I have all these problems. And Chris don't have any. And now his daddy has arthritis really bad. But um, the last thing I need is for him to contract some tick disease and then have all these autoimmune diseases that you get from them. That would just be horrible. I sure hope it's not anything like that. Um, but it does look really strange. So um, let's get him to the doctor. Let's say our prayers. And thanks for joining in today. And tomorrow we will talk about, I um, already put my book down, but tomorrow we'll go over chapter three. And uh, I will see y'all tomorrow. Let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for the ladies that decided to tune in and listen about your wonderful word that you have supplied through the penmanship of men that were um, <clears throat> that had your guidance through your Holy Spirit. We pray that we will gain wisdom and understanding and um, through this Bible study. Um, Please be with us as we go throughout our day. Bless each and every one of us as we um, read your word. And just thank you so much for everything you've done for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. I used my earphones. For those of you who listened live, or even if you didn't listen live, you'll hear the same voice. Let me know if there's a difference in the um, sound, okay? I can only do this with my phone, so I can't do it with, like, my computer and iPad. Y'all have a blessed day, and we will see you next time tomorrow on Real Southern Woman, where we love the Lord.